Well, hello from the Bannock County Fairgrounds outside of Pocatello, Idaho. And today, we're gonna give you a tour of our trailer. There's still a pretty stiff breeze after that uh, little storm system moved through last night, but I got the nice camera on with the shotgun mic. So hopefully, the technology takes care of the wind noise. This is our trailer. It was made a long, long time ago in a land far, far away, yes. It was a homemade trailer uh, by somebody in like the Wasilla or Palmer area of Alaska. And they used to tow skid steers and bobcats on it. So it's very heavy duty. Seven, eight, nine, ten. The deck is 10 feet long. The overall length, including the tongue and the ramps, is about 14 feet. The great thing about trailers, if they're made out of steel, is that you can just weld more accessories onto them. And this is a perfect example of accessorizing a trailer. We picked up this trailer at the same time as we purchased our ATV. There was an ad on Craigslist. The guy just needed something longer and we needed something that would fit our ATV. So I think I paid like maybe seven, $800 for it. Not much, but it's definitely earned its keep. Over the years, we've made some modifications. So I'll try to take you through in the order that we've made them. Since we live in Alaska, in the land of way too many lakes, we wanted some kayaks. And we had this kayak rack built by a welding shop in Anchorage. And it's pretty nifty. One of these days, I would like to just finish what is started here with a complete cage that comes down to the other side. I don't know what I'd put on it yet, but I would make good use of it. So you can see the framework of this rack and it was even nice because they welded on these washers so I could hook the tie downs up to them. And then down here where it's welded to the frame, they've done an excellent job of bracing and reinforcing everything. And then at the same time, we had these bars welded on to the trailer, which gave us more options on securing these ramps. So we could have the ramps all the way out this far, right here, or if there's no load, we could just put them all the way forward. And chain them up. About a year or so after that, we started getting some really bad tire wear on uh, two of these tires. So it was time to replace the tires. There was one big problem. The wheels that were on here were some ancient, like a uh, split rim, like a two piece rim that people were like afraid to even uh, take off without just deflating. I guess split rims have a horrible reputation for hurting people. And at that time, Craigslist saved our butts again because I went on there and this is kind of an odd size. They're five lug by five and a half inch uh, pattern. And just by the sheer luck of things, that guy, uh, Jay, which I went to uh, when we left Alaska to get a pair of t tires for this, he had an ad on Craigslist for these wheels. Perfect match. So it was a win-win situation for him because we bought these four wheels off of him and he conveniently sells tires and we bought four tires as well. So another year goes by and we notice our brand new tires have a tremendous wear pattern on, I can't remember the inside or outside, but one was absolutely horrendous and it had to be replaced. It only lasted one summer in Alaska and we probably put like 8,000 miles on it. So there was a serious problem with the way the tires were wearing. So what happened next is something very frustrating and it can give a business a very bad rap. In Anchorage, there's a place called Trailer Craft. They specialize in like freight liners, uh, trailers, cargo trailers, all that type of accessory stuff. So I went in there and asked for an estimate to uh, check things out. Well, they were floored. They had never seen uh, axles like this before. They were saying it might have been off an old Ford. Some even said it might have been off like a uh, mobile home when they transport mobile homes from the manufacturing facility. But whatever it is and whatever these are, they were scared to work on it. So that's when they gave me a $2,000 quote to go ahead and replace all the axles, the springs, the hardware, the bearings, every single thing under there. They did not give me a diagnosis. They gave me an estimate to rebuild the whole undercarriage of the trailer. 
I don't know about you, but my mind does not work that way. I like to go for the source of the problem, not just blanket replace everything under there. So that's when I went on to Google and I found Dave from Tagalong Trailers. This guy has a shop on his property and he kind of lives on the mid hillside in Anchorage and he makes ATV trailers, but he's also a welder and he has a guy there. I can't remember his name right now, but he's an awesome welder as well. So I pull up into this neighborhood and I just see this big old shop and I'm like, yes, I feel good about this. These are handy people who want to fix something, not just sell me something. And that's what happened. They came out, they looked at the trailer, they could see that all the uh, hardware for the leaf springs and shackles was just plain worn out, causing all kinds of geometric issues with the axles. So here's the best part. They were able to fix the problem for about $500. And that included some used leaf springs that were still in great shape that he had laying around his shop. So at this point, we were very, very happy that we only had to spend 500 instead of two grand, that we spent some more money with him. For many years, we were not running with a spare tire. So we had him order a brand new rim. And the tire that we put on that rim is the tire that was wearing out really bad from the spring problem. You know, it's a spare tire, it doesn't need to be perfect. All it needs to do is get your ass out of a jam. But we also had another problem that was driving us crazy and needed to be improved. These mountain bikes used to be stored on this bike rack in the trailer hitch of our ATV. Now this worked great until we drove the top of the world highway from uh, Chicken to Dawson City. At that time, the road was really rough in spots and what happened was the weight from the bikes fatigued this metal here and this kind of all came down like so. It took us a while to notice there was a problem back there, but by the time we did, there was already some damage to Rebecca's brand new bike. We knew a solution existed for our problem, but in the meantime, we just had the welding shop that made our uh, rack for the kayaks do a quick spot weld on the trailer hitch just to get everything lined up properly. So this brings us back to the front of the trailer and the guys at Tagalong took our existing bike rack, lopped the 90 degree curve that went into the trailer hitch of the uh, ATV or your personal vehicle, lopped that off so it mounted vertically and welded a two inch receiver hitch right here. So now it just slides right in. And at the same time, that did something really awesome. We were finally able to take off the kayaks, the ATV, or the bikes without having to take another one off first. So independently, we could use them all without having to take the others off. It made life so much more convenient. But we weren't done yet. Because they had the right mindset and saved us money, we had them weld on some loops for us for tie downs. And the coupler here on the tongue of the trailer was just getting worn out and had to be replaced. Which segues into a discussion about another problem. This trailer, despite how big it is, it does not have much tongue weight. And that's its biggest problem. There's not enough weight on the tongue. And I thought that by putting this spare tire right here, that's probably a solid 25 to 45 pounds maybe. I thought that might help but it really didn't make much of a difference. So I think our solution to this problem is gonna be to make the trailer longer. And what that'll do is give us more options as to what we can and can't load onto the trailer. Since we're talking about future modifications, I wouldn't mind redesigning these ramps so they just kind of slid in and out from under the trailer. Now at this time, even the guys at uh, Tagalong Trailer were very unsure about these hubs and axles, but they did tell me they are very, very strong because the two inch axle that runs between the hubs and all that is a solid two inch thick piece of metal. So they are very, very stout. But still, nobody knew what the hell these bearings and hubs were off of. It put me in an interesting predicament because I knew the bearings needed a repack, just as pure maintenance. But I didn't want to have somebody in Alaska do it, find out that nobody could find the parts and just have it be a nightmare and screw up our upcoming trip, which was last year's North American road trip. So I unscrewed these caps, made sure there's plenty of grease in there and crossed my fingers 
and we made it to Panama City, Florida. And I hate to say it, but there are a lot of trailers and old vehicles in the south. And I thought if there was any chance of a place having the parts that I might need for this, instead of having to go and replace everything, it would be in the south. And crossing my fingers worked because we made it there, no problems at all. And there was even a guy parked next to us in a campsite that said, oh yeah, we have family here in town and he has a shop. He's coming over for dinner, we'll have him stop by later. So this guy, after their dinner, came over, knocked on our door, and said, hey, I heard you need some wheel bearings packed. So that was another huge help because driving this beast around towns is never easy and getting into tight driveways can be difficult. But he was able to pick up the trailer, pack the wheel bearings, get all the seals done in one day and have it back to me later in the evening for under $200. That's a heck of a deal. I never would have got a deal like that in Alaska because most Alaska labor rates are to the tune of 125 to 150 an hour. So that concludes the story of our kick-ass toy hauling, ATV, kayak, and mountain bike hauling trailer. Now, it's Monday afternoon and I need to head into the office and do all our check-in stuff, give them some money, and we've also been having some mail shipped here. These people are awesome. I can't say enough about this place. And I'll also inquire about the status of the state-of-the-art showers and unlocking an electrical post for us. Hi, Jamie. How are you, Dan? Yes. Okay, you bring your dog in. We have them in here all the time. Okay. I even have dog treats. So yeah, Jamie and the staff here are very, very nice. And it's always nice when we can ride our ATV around the location. Yeah, I can't jump on the ATV and drive it all the way down into Pocatello. That would be like, a magnet for getting pulled over by the cops. But around the fairgrounds, this ATV blends right in because all you need to do is put like a shovel, a rake, and a weed whacker in it, and it's a groundskeeping vehicle. I do have one more surprise for you today. There is a fishing pond lake-ish here at the uh, fairgrounds, and it's even stocked with little trout and I believe some uh, landlocked salmon. are going to die down tomorrow. So earlier today, I went online and tried to buy an Idaho fishing license, but they are having problems with their website, so I had to call it in. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap things up for today's video, but before I do so, I'm going to end it with some clips from last night's storm. We'll see you tomorrow.